Hey, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about the different iOS and Android versions. All right, so today, even though it is a beautiful sunny day outside, I'm in the office because I'm coming down with something. I'm in the early stages of a cold and you know when you get a cold that first day you just it zaps you of energy it just completely clobbers you and then you're like the next couple weeks or you're just congested and everything I'm on that first day and I have like no energy I mean I came I got up early I got up at 4 30 came into the office and I thought I'm gonna be really productive today and then I just, I've had like three naps in between client meetings so it's just been like one of those ugh day days so I took the opportunity today to go through and uh, install iOS 12 on my iPhone and on my iPad and all the things that keep bugging you about. And today I wanted to talk just very briefly about the different OS versions and then the availability of you know, what versions they're on. So have a look at my screen here. We talked about this last year a lot about the market share and there's this really good website called Stat Counter where they have lots of different stats you can look at from time to time. They keep, keep them pretty much up to date. This goes to August of 2018 so we're talking just over a month ago. And here, this is no surprise, Android's at you know 76.82%, so it's the lion's share. iOS, we're still at 20%, and then you got these other guys. Poor Windows at 0.4%. Nobody's ever come to us and asked for a Windows phone app, ever. So down here, you can see iOS over the last year, it's been pretty much 19, 20%. I think it's gonna stay that way for the next few years. I think iPhone users are died in the wool iPhone users and they're, they're going to stay that way but people who are just who are coming on with Android they're going to stick with that and I think that that may actually end up growing but if you're going to do just one platform do Android but anyway that, that's not what I want to talk about we talked about that already so have a look at the distribution of the different uh, 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 updates here so in iOS one of the nice things about iPhones is that they are in charge of the platform. They're the only manufacturer of iPhones. So when they release a new version, they pretty much roll it out to, well, they don't roll it out to everybody, but they'll roll it out to the last few versions of the phone. So I had an iPhone 5. When they went to iOS 11, I couldn't upgrade. I had to get a new phone, so I'm on an iOS. I'm on iPhone 8 here, so I could go to iOS 12, but for the most part, if it's eligible, they do get upgraded. And if you look at this graph here, you can see that um, the majority of iPhone users are on uh, 11.4, and the next one is 11.3, 11 11 and you can see this distribution of people adopting the different versions. So every time a new version comes out, the majority of users go to that, but you still have people on older phones that are on the older devices. But if you were going to do client work, like when we do client work, you could specify what is the lowest version you go for. Like we could say uh, iOS, iOS 10. We're not going to go below iOS, iOS 10 because 90% of people are above iOS 10 and there's just the last 10%. Now, realistically, if we release an application and we're just following all the coding guidelines, it will work below iOS 10, but it, we don't want to have to go through and test it and everything like that. It's something to think about if you do client work. I would, and I learned this from working on a, um, on a website for a company once and they were saying that they were gonna guarantee it worked on, I think Firefox or Firefox and Internet Explorer, but not Opera or Chrome. And I, I remember saying, but it, it will work on Opera or Chrome because we're just using standard HTML. And their whole thing was, yes, it should, but we're not gonna go through and test all those. And just in case, we don't want them coming back with every little tiny thing. So if you're gonna do a quote for something, you have to specify what your minimum operating system is. Even if you think you can support the lower systems, it's more in terms of the time you need to spend testing and everything like that. So here, iOS, every time there's a new version comes out because they just sit there and nag you saying, you wanna upgrade, you wanna upgrade, you wanna upgrade. If you're eligible, they pretty much have everything is up to date. I mean, the majority of users, which is much easier as a developer. Compare that to uh, to the Android versions over here. So we got, um, here's the different distributions as of the end of August of the different iPhone versions. So we've got 
uh, Marshmallow at you know Android 6 at 22.43, Nougat at 21.7, uh, Lollipop at 14. So we got like a, a distribution still all the way across, which does make things a little bit more difficult as a developer. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I had a bug in Ear Agent, which was only affecting newer Android versions. I think it was seven or above, but it, I, you know, I didn't even find it. Like nobody even complained about it and I hadn't tested it because I was still testing on six. That, that was bad of me. Considering it's my biggest earner, it was bad of me not to test it. So, so it's a lot more distributed. And of course, the, the reason for that is that you have all these different manufacturers. And one of the, like when I get an Android phone, I will only get a Google Android phone. So I'll get the Nexus or the Pixel because I know that when a new operating system Android version comes out, it's available. And you got Samsung going, hmm, we're not sure if we're going to release this to the latest users yet because they want you to, to get the new phone and everything like that. So it's just you know, really quickly today, if you haven't looked at these stats, it's very interesting to have a look at. You know, it's uh, as an Android developer, if you're only going to do one market, do Android because you mo the majority of the phones, but there's so much different testing, you so much, so many different environments, so many different the operating systems out there or versions of the, of the same operating system and they in different manufacturers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It can be a bit more complicated, unlike iOS, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I still think you should do both of them. I still, still think that 20% is still considerable. I still think iOS developers, our iOS users spend more money than Android users do, but that could change over time. So anyway, really quick one today, I hope. And that was it for today. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.